some people just, just, they do the recording and that's it, right? So really, the, I think the key is for getting started, start simple. Don't overthink it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Episode one doesn't need to be like episode a thousand. All right, folks, welcome back again, as always. Help me be big tech. Get in here, like, comment, engage, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are, wherever you're hearing this today. Number one, I hope you're having a great day. But number two, say something in the comments, subscribe, like. I don't even care if you say you hate this. The episode is bad and I have something in my teeth. As long as you help me engage on big media, that's what we're out here to do, to be big tech. So these kinds of messages can get out today with the guests that I want you to listen to. If you're interested in podcasting as a business, a model, a brand development, or even in use with your e-commerce brand, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to welcome a gentleman who has been moving literally into a position to get his business and service really growing. In fact, I believe he just made a really big move. And so we're going to talk about that today, both metaphorically and physically in the world of podcasting. So Edward, thanks for joining me, brother. A pleasure to be here. All right. So was I? how far off was I from the intro? Am I, am I right? Did you just make a big move? Well, we're, let's see, we're literally moving to California as a, as a company and we're closing our round right now, our pre-seed round. There you go. So I knew there were some big things going on. I thought you may have moved before we were doing this or just right about or somewhere really close. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of-, of You're uh, in the yeah, middle yeah. of it right now. Okay, yeah. okay, because that's a big move, man. We're, you're coming from Canada? Yep. All the way to California? Yep. So you're putting all your, you're putting everything in? Yep. That is very, <laughs> that's cool because it's not, I mean, we, we, we interview people at all levels of business, usually at their growth stages and in scaling stages. And every once in a while, I get somebody who is like making that major move where I personally know where you're going and believe you're going to do very well with it and making a big leap right now of sort of a, a leap of faith, really moving your wife and down and your family right down to California into exactly. another country to get your funding secured and your business secured and then really launch this thing into mainstream media, right? Yeah. I mean, even even the funding, we already we already closed that. Yeah. So that's great. But now it's going to be, it's all about having that ground game in the Bay Area, which is super important. So what is it we're talking about? What is the service? What is the business? What is your area of focus? Yeah, so Podcast AI is a SaaS platform for those that don't know, software as a service. It is a platform that automates podcasting. Right now, we're super strong on post-production, promotion, turning your podcast into a website, all that stuff. But the ambition is really to go the whole gamut and really automate everything that it takes to do a podcast from A to Z. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it's very cool that you're using a lot of AI technology for transcribing and uh, moving. Tell me a little bit more about how the platform engine works to help people kind of push podcasts out better. Yeah. So right now you upload your episode once you're done recording it. We will actually, we have the ability to host your feed. So that puts your your podcast out to Apple and Spotify. We're going to be watching this month push to YouTube. So for those of you that are also publishing on YouTube, you only have to drop your episode one place and have one source of truth on what is the your metadata around your, your episode. We're also able to turn your entire podcast into a show website. So if you have a domain name or podcast.your domain name, we automatically generate that. It has super powerful search. It has all the transcripts for the audience, the ability to listen, learn about the show. It's super SEO optimized. So it's really like if you're thinking of uploading your episode to to one of the hosting platforms for mm -hmm. podcasting, and you have to upload it to YouTube, and you have to put your episode information in WordPress, you're duplicating all that effort. We just turn it into one thing. Okay. Now, are, are you a podcaster by trade? This is how you got started in, in developing this, or, or are you, yeah, where did you I, get your- I've been, I've been a co-host on podcasts, okay. I've edited podcasts, produced podcasts, everything. Very cool. And is that, I mean, where are you in that walk? Was that something you've always done? Is that something you fell into? Is that something you... It's something... So I've, I've always done like video editing, okay. but podcasting itself, just joining a podcast, which is really just a call between friends every Monday night type thing. Okay. Very low key. Did started doing that like 10 years ago and cool. just always been into this whole scene. 10 years. Things have changed a lot in 10 years, haven't they? They have. And actually the funny thing is podcasting, it's this old standard from 2005. And it's really having just this explosive growth right now. Everything is converging on podcasting. Yeah. And why do you think that is ultimately? What do you mean? What do you see in the market that's shifting people to, to consume so many podcasts now? I think it's a few things. And you can kind of see like podcasting has YouTube's attention. Right? Yeah. Google is shutting down Google Podcasts and merging podcasting into YouTube. So oh. I, I think you, you were talking about fighting big tech and everything. Well, for people that were wondering what's going to compete against YouTube, 
I think funny enough, the answer becomes podcasting. Podcasting is now starting to have video. It's getting on Google's radar. I think that just decentralized standard, like if you think of it, every podcast has its own feed. It's own RSS file that has every episode in it. That's kind of like a decentralized database. That's the alternative to YouTube, really. And so, yeah, just everything's converging on it, both audio and video. And that's the thing. Yeah. How much in terms of content is someone... Okay, let me back up because my brain's going forward. There's a lot to unpack. So I want to figure out how to ask the questions right away here. <laughs> but in terms of like content, in terms of like value, and maybe just off the call, three things you think someone who's either in podcasting or interested in getting podcasting, what are the three areas they should maybe focus on that are critical to getting started and kind of making some momentum and move forward? Yeah. So in terms of getting a podcast started, and that's a, that's a great point, like for small businesses, your first big SaaS purchase on sales is going to be, let's say, HubSpot. In fact, a lot of startups are using HubSpot instead of Salesforce as, as they're really from A to Z, even as mature, more mature companies. So that's your first thing for sales. But if you think about it, your first thing you're going to do for marketing, the best ROI is going to be podcasting because you can get potential customers on the show. The show goes out to potential customers. It's amazing for lead generation. It podcasting is the way to go for marketing. And it lets you do what you're supposed to do as a small business, talk to your customers, right? And so to get that going, you really just have to have a show concept, but it's not difficult. Your show concept can evolve over time. It can really just start with meeting your customers and having discussions with your customers. That's all you need to do. You have to have a podcasting platform to host your show on. So that's one thing podcastai.com does. There's a bunch of hosts out there. You have to just be able to record a conversation between two people. So that could be a recorded Google Meets. It could be a recorded Zoom call. It can be really basic. And then you can scale that up, right? You can uh, go up in production value. You can get the, the editing more and more complicated. Right now, Podcast AI, we ship something we call the episode studio because we realized 95% of people, they just need to put an intro, an outro to the recording, figure out a cold open. Our AI actually figures out what would do the best cold open for you. And it produces that final episode. Yeah. So that's, and that's what 95% of people need. So yeah. you just need to find a platform to host on, start doing recordings, like get 10 episodes done, right? Yeah. And keep going. And keep going. It's a marathon, as I've discovered in my time doing this. And when I got started, and maybe I told you this, but I didn't really intend for this to be some sort of strategic move, like some really planned out move. Really, it was I was doing YouTube and I was doing other media and someone's like, well, you got to get a podcast going. You got to interview people. You got to talk about this. I'm like, and I hid it hot around it for months and months and didn't do anything. And then just kind of started off the cuff by just interviewing friends of mine that I know that are in this space. And that sort of turned into something that turned into something. And I've never turned it for those who are listening still. I've never turned it into an advertising platform and sold rights or done a lot of things others have done. I don't guess don't pay to come on here. And I really just use it as an opportunity to to gain awareness and to get into the same theory that I continually tell everybody else, which is who you know that gets you there and what you know that keeps you there. So it's made a great relationship connectivity and a strategic relationship through some of the deals and businesses we've done. And from that respect, it's been great for branding and having conversations and bringing great people like you on to talk about the exciting things that you're doing and give you a platform to go. And so I think that at times people overthink it and they, they think sometimes it's going to just be really simple. If I do 10 podcasts, the world's going to open up and maybe I'm going to have a Joe Rogan podcast. Well, that's not exactly how it works, is it? That's not even how it worked for Joe Rogan. Right. right. It, it took 100 episodes for it to start getting on the map. The early episodes, it's a mix of a lot of like fight episodes, and it really turned into something very different. It was interviewing his comedian friends, and then it became interviewing experts. So in the end, Nike has it right. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah, just get in there and plug it. And what does it would normally take in, in, to get through a process of, producing show, doing the show and executing the show on your own. What would you say hours wise and stuff it would take you to do that? It takes, it can take, it can be as quick or as the opposite of quick as you want really, right? It's, it's how much production value you want to fit into it. At the very basic, you're just recording a conversation and then uploading it to a podcast host. And that feed you submit it once to Apple and Spotify, that can be your podcast. But if you really want to do it well, when you can, you can start getting into this, it's really your 
The first thing is pre-production. That's guest research. Who do I want on, right? Who makes sense to have a conversation with? What's the kind of audience I want to cultivate? So that's sort of the pre-recording phase, pre pre-production phase. Then you have the recording. So again, could just be recording a Zoom, Zoom meeting, Google Meet. Then you have editing. So there's various tools that'll help you remove ums and ahs. Maybe you want to rearrange things. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to delete a little part. Some people use tools as basic as iMovie, really? something like that. Final, Final Cut Pro can do it, yeah. but a really easy video editor can do yeah. it for you too. Um, so, but some people just, just, they do the recording and that's it, right? So really, the, I think the key is for getting started, start simple. Don't overthink it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Episode one doesn't need to be like episode a thousand. Total production, right? professional. Yeah, everything. exactly. Good, Again, good go back to, <laughs> yeah, go back to Joe Rogan episode one. Like it's not, yeah, it's, it's not the greatest production value in the world, right? Right. And that's fine. And so just keep going. And the main thing is persistence in terms of producing those episodes and getting them out there. Like you're not going to put your first episode out and suddenly everybody's going to discover it. That's not going to happen, right? It's going to take a while and something's going to click. You have to, luck is preparation plus opportunity. So every time you put an episode out there, that's a chance at bat. Yeah. And then something's going to happen. Maybe the right guest tweeted out your episode, something like that. And then your show's actually going to take off and, and go from there. So that's how to think about it. Luck is preparation plus opportunity. I like that. And that really just means getting out there and doing something. So a little bit of luck exactly. can happen along the way. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and in terms of the, the putting an episode out there, it's so there's editing the episode and mm-hmm. uploading it to a platform. Great. You've got it hosted. Then again, it's how much work do you want to put into it? So do you want to think really hard about the title and the description and, and putting chapters in your episode show notes? Podcast AI handles that automatically, but you could do it manually. You could use various tools to help you do it. So there's, there's a bunch of tools for that. That's what we call post-production. And then you have after post-production, which is all that metadata that goes around your show, and which is good for SEO. Yeah. Then there is the promotion, right? So creating clips of your episode, putting that, those out on your social media platforms and driving traffic to the episode, getting that listened to and creating a virtuous cycle. Yeah. And after, after promotion and all that stuff, then you can think later on, okay, as your show gets bigger, maybe you get partnerships, maybe you get sponsorships. But I mean, frankly, the, the podcasts have to start thinking, okay, the goal is not really, I'm not going to monetize this right away. That's not how it works. It's create something of value and then the opportunities to monetize will yeah. come. Yeah. Give something away for free and then set up expectations for monetization later or a way of structuring it into the business or the model you currently have, which is kind of where we're in the e-commerce world. So if we're on that side of the house talking about brands and building brands and developing product-based brands, physical, where would you say someone who has that kind of a growth, where would they look at? Maybe in their home and kitchen or outdoor gear space or something, how would they use a podcast to kind of help exemplify their brand or their marketing or their sales? Yeah. So, so if you're, so the scenario is you're selling physical products, you're in e-commerce. And the question is, how are you going to use a podcast to get those sales? I think it's probably interviewing interesting people for the audience of what you're selling. So, I mean, if it was kitchen utensils, can you get an interview with the person who created like a beautiful toaster? <laughs> Something like that, mm-hmm. right? Like something, something interesting. An interview with the person who who created that, maybe a company that's building those things that could be of interest and actually help in your marketing efforts. So let's say you're advertising on social media. Well, yeah, like you could advertise the product or you could advertise an interview with the person who built the product or something like that. Yeah. So All kinds tons of ways. creative ways to get around it. I know there's a lot of celebrities and influencers now who are in spaces like outdoor or football or home and kitchen or whatever that are now podcasting and from podcasting, they're getting deals with like Hicks clad and other stuff to go out and promote physical products. So I really see the combination of that effort, which ties back to the brand and the brand owner and making sure that you have some interest in the brand. If you're just developing a brand and you have no interest whatsoever, it probably is best that you put a little bit of interest into the product or brand type you're going to sell. It doesn't have to be something you're passionate about per se. And we know it for us, it's like what runs in the numbers. We don't necessarily have to be that passionate about it, but you got to know enough 
about your audience to know who they are and what they're talking about, that you could speak to them, that you could get on a podcast or you could get somewhere and talk about the benefits and the features and, and what's in it for the customer and then be able to say, well, I'm a brand owner that has XYZ brand and we solve these problems and these are the solutions. So that's just a matter of doing good business, don't you think? Yeah. I, I mean, look, you can be an expert or the person you're interviewing can be the expert. Exactly. But by expert, it doesn't mean you got certified in, in kitchen appliances. It means everything about them because you're just living that, right? Yeah. So so long as someone has the knowledge in that conversation, yeah. and then you as the host, you, you've you done the research to be able to ask the interesting questions to let the guests shine. That's how it works. Yeah. And where are we going, speaking of which, Mr. Expert, in this 2024 with podcasting? Like, where do you see it happening? Is there any innovations or trends or things that are occurring you find are fascinating that you can maybe tell us about? Yeah. So synthetic content is going to be huge. Synthetic um, content? Yeah. So Podcast AI, we already have synthetic ad reads. So when you load your show into Podcast AI, we take a sample of you talking and we load up the voice for you as a host in our system. And we give you the ability to generate a few paragraphs, let's say, of audio in your voice, and you can just write the text and it'll generate that audio. So if you're an audio only podcast and you're editing yourself, you can actually script yourself and, and have that downloaded as an MP3, put it in the episode and kind of start building an episode that way. Interesting. Um, you can also generate an entire ad read. So if you have sponsors, right, you just have to tell Podcast AI, okay, here's the sponsor name. Here's sort of the call to action for the sponsorship. Okay. Here's the host that I want reading it. Okay. Let's say it's you. And I want two minutes. You just hit generate. Podcast AI will ad lib the entire ad in your voice. By the end of 2024, it's also going to be producing the video aspect of that. So it's going to be pretty That's insane. both awesome and scary. Yeah. Now, and it's still on on synthetic content. Like what's yeah. possible right now is kind of insane. We've started prototyping this with a few customers. They are prolific bloggers. Mm. And so they have consistently, they're putting out one or two posts a week or even more. And what we do is every Monday, we generate an entire podcast episode automatically using their AI host, uh, using as a basis those blog articles that they put out. Hmm. And so it actually does an intro, it does an outro with music in, music out. It ad-libs between the chapters and the, the content itself is ad-libbed so that it makes sense because people don't speak exactly wow. as they write. Yeah. And the AI is it's knowledgeable about who the host is, what the show is, so it has the context. It has everything that you wrote in your blog and it's completely automated. So what we do is that all those post-production steps, we chain those and we automate those. So it just on its own generates that episode, all the show notes, title, description, chapters, everything, and puts it out there on the feed. And so we have one of these customers after we set it up, they were, they were asking, what do I have to do now? And I'm, and I told them, I'm like, well, just keep blogging. And it's that simple. So Synthetic content in terms of blog to podcast, yeah. we already have that. Next thing is actually going to be dubbing. So you have your you have your show in English language. We make it so you just go, okay, I want this in French. Right. And that just automatically happens. I've seen some of that recently. I think the most recent one I saw was somebody translated Hitler's speech backwards to match oh his mouth from, <laughs> from German to English so you could listen to him talk in his actual... <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this is getting really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it almost begs the question, is there going to be some point where the guest and the host are both machines? Yes. Yeah, so th that wow. that is and definitely going to happen. In fact, that's the next step for us for the blog to podcast. Okay. So what we found is it's more interesting if we actually have two hosts. Okay. And even if one is just springing ideas back and forth, kind of serving as the sounding board. Interesting. For, for the so, the okay, let me unpack that for just a second. So I would be here with you, but there's a third person who's actually an AI who's a co-host. Is that what you're saying? No, not quite. It would not be quite. more like, it would be more like you wrote a blog. Okay. Okay. But it wouldn't be super interesting if it was just an episode consisting of you monologuing your blog. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. if we can actually add your friend as a co-host, okay. as an AI co-host, okay. and you're both essentially pinging back and forth on this content. So you're as, acting as the expert, so to speak, because you wrote the blog article and it knows that but your friend is sort of asking you the questions to kind of get through that flow wow so then it becomes more interesting but 
we can totally have those AI hosts at some point as guests with real people or three three AI hosts and one real guest. Yeah. That can totally happen. So you are your are you a developer? I mean, did you Yeah. Okay, so in the human machine language and learning space, are you into the data scientist as well? Just just software engineer okay. full stack, but so it used to be that a decade ago, a decade plus ago, AI was a super special, it still is a super specialized field, obviously, machine learning and all this stuff. And, but it was a lot of R&D, right? And also the results of the work very rapidly being invalidated. So some examples, YouTube captioning, that was invented before Google invented something called Whisper. Okay. Yep. So YouTube captions are actually inferior to anything using Whisper, which is what everybody uses for, for speech to text. So, and this, it's kind of ironic because YouTube is owned by Google and Google invented Whisper, but it's better than YouTube captions. So <laughs> use pod, yeah. So you use podcast AI, we transcribe your whole show using okay. Whisper, okay. but you also can download the captions like an SRT and that's better than the YouTube And there's um, up to YouTube at the time you do it, yeah. Exactly. And, and so you're, what you're seeing is all that work that YouTube put into building that captioning system is just invalidated. And everybody is essentially building on top of Whisper. So to build an AI product, you don't have to be like an ML engineer, right? Okay. Yeah. Build, so if you think of the, the whole AI landscape, there's the hardware. Mm -hmm. So that's NVIDIA, right? A lot of money is going to be made on hardware. Then you have the middleware. So those are companies using those open source models, essentially. So there's text-to-speech companies, speech-to-text companies, text-to-image companies, there's LLM companies. They're all focusing on one specific model, but those are basically off the shelf, being invalidated every day. I don't think that's going to be a great business long-term because the prices on that is going to go, it's going to tend to zero. And then on top of that, you have the application layer. The application layer means what we use every day. Mm -hmm. HubSpot is an application. YouTube is an application. Sure. Podcast AI is an application. And what we do is we orchestrate all of these different models together to have a coherent product, yeah. a structured product. Yeah, a structured so, yeah. yeah. So so we're using the best text-to-speech. We're using the best speech-to-text. We're using the best AI LLMs. That's like text processing. We're using the best image generation. So right now, if you upload an episode to Podcast AI, you can go generate artwork. It will generate episode artwork for your episode. And it's very similar to if you've used Dolly on, mm -hmm. on OpenAI, oh, yeah. if you've used, yep. yeah, Stable Diffusion, it's very similar to that. And, and actually, the next thing we're going to be doing is adding support for templates because a lot of people want to be able to use, and typically people use like Canva or Photoshop to do their templates for for their episode artwork, but we're gonna we're gonna make that automatic too. But so yeah, if you're looking at podcast AI, it's actually an orchestration of tons of models, and that's where all the interesting thing is happening. Things are happening right now. You're almost because, a podcast aggregator of data and output at some point, I guess. Is basically. Well, we're essentially you could think of it as we're a content management system, okay. and your content yep. is your podcast, yep. right? And so we generate your website, we generate your feed, we push to YouTube, to we many. push everywhere, yeah, yeah. does all that. So yeah. all your source of truth for where your podcast lives mm -hmm. is in platform. Mm -hmm. But we also, in one platform, we're doing all your promotional clips. And we're going to be able soon to schedule those out to your social media plat uh, platforms and accounts automatically. Smart. In fact, we generate the top 10 viral moments for your episode. And then for each of those moments, you can generate the social post copy that goes with it. So all the LinkedIn copy, all the TikTok copy, YouTube short copy, Instagram copy. And we're going to be able to make it so that you'll be able to connect your show accounts and your host accounts, and then schedule those out automatically in third person perspective. So on the show we received type thing put to the, to the show accounts, but schedule out to the host accounts. I received this guest out to, to your show accounts. So the, the level of automation is going to be pretty. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, as a single guest and a host with a team that kind of works in different areas of the segment of distribution and post-production for me, I, what you're saying is I could literally take this recording when we're done and throw it into your system and then I'm done. And then literally no one else has to touch it, manage it, 
upload it or whatnot, it's all going to go out through all my normal content distribution channels and all the different locations and all the different media and all the different shorts and clips and even apparently a co-host talking blog opportunity, which is crazy because at some point the question then begs itself, when, when are we going to be irrelevant? When is the content created by AI and there's no longer a need for a podcast host because the systems are just creating all the information? Yeah, so so that's actually a really interesting question because customers always, they, they ask me because they're very interested in this, especially if they're creating content, they'll say, wait a minute, you're going to be able to generate a video of me saying something? Like, what does that mean, right? Because there's obviously implications of that. You're going to be able to generate a video of anybody saying anything. Yeah. Right. So deep what fakes, does that mean? Right? Yeah. So, so everything's going to be a deep fake. So... What that means is that provenance is going to become ultra important. So you'll be able to produce a video of anybody saying anything. So that doesn't mean anything anymore. It's kind of like if I came up with a wild quote and said, hey, this person said that. Well, prove it, right? Like you don't take that at face value necessarily. Yeah. And it's really going to be the same thing with content. And yeah, right. So th there's, there's that sort of validation aspect of, is this true? Uh, did this actually happen? But the other part of provenance is legitimacy or sanction, right? Authenticity um, of the authenticity, author. right? If if let's say you're reading a communication from a celebrity, chances are the celebrity didn't write it; it was their publicist. Yep. But because it came from the official channel, that's as good as the celebrity did it, and it's because you know that the celebrity is endorsing this channel, right? Yep. There's there's TV shows. There, there's a cartoonist. A Japanese cartoonist called Akira Toriyama that recently died. He did a big cartoon in, in Japan. And 20 years ago, he was drawing it himself. And recent, like, recently, it was someone he brought on. And he was doing part of the story. But that, per, that new artist was continuing his work. Now, if it wasn't officially endorsed by him, that would just be some random fan art, right? Mm -hmm. But because it has his endorsement, it's legitimate and people consider it like this is canonical. It happened in the show, right? Yeah. This is real. So that's that's the difference. Provenance, authenticity, and and uh, sanction of the artist. So the answer is, and hey, it's even in, in Hollywood, right? Like how many movies, what percentage of this movie is CG rendered? Sometimes a <laughs> Nowadays, lot. it seems like most... 90% or more of all movies have 90% or more of all CGI based backgrounds, drops, locations, et cetera. And in some cases, you're even questioning how much of the actors are real. Well, take, take Toy Story. So that's oh, yeah, entirely full CGI. Yeah. That's full CGI. Yeah. Now take the fact that we could replicate, like what was interesting there? I don't know. Like famous actors were voicing, make, doing the voices, Correct. right? Yeah. So we can essentially replicate those voices now. Yeah. So right. anybody can produce that. So what what is... What is the what makes it interesting? Well, it's, it's it going to be official channels. You're right. I mean, at the end of the exactly. day, it's going to be the authentication of the channel by the consumer or listener or to, to determine whether or not that came from the official channel and the official person. Otherwise, it's going to be a question of whether or not everything is fake. Correct. And, and there's a third aspect, which is distribution. Yes. Right. If you're just doing fan art, you're just a random person. You don't have distribution. The official channel has the distribution. True. True. So. Like so putting between, creators up on TikTok or something, right? You don't know. Yes. Yeah. So, so between all those aspects, mm -hmm. it's it's really, it's going to be more of the same. So things are going to be very different in the sense that this was never possible before and not commercially possible. You've you've been able to do, what was the, like one of the Star Wars, like they recreated, who was it that died? Like, uh, Princess oh, when, she, when the Leia, Leia died, right? And Leia, the, yeah, the exactly. actress who played her, whose name suddenly escapes me because yeah, same, same here, but, it'll come to us. But, but yeah, like that's been possible for a while. We're going to but... get totally flamed on this, right? Because we don't know the answer to the actress from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Hurry. But yes, yes, yes. Woo! Save the Gary day. Fisher. Dang. Yes. We've been. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was a tough moment. Okay. But, but, but so that's been possible for a while, right? Yeah. But extremely expensive. Now it's going to cost nothing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. And you wonder, and, and it borderlines, and there's a hybrid amount of that, because if you go to something as far as Avatar, that there's human interaction with total CGI of most of the characters, except for a few of the humans. So you see that crossover. So I, I get the idea that we're headed towards that. I kind of resist the idea that the humans get kicked out of the, out of the engagement. 
at least on the screen or on the podcast side, I kind of wonder where does that take us? Uh, well, well, let me give you another reassuring example. Okay. Chess. Yeah, true. Nobody cares about watching a computer fighting a computer. Not particularly, no. And it doesn't matter that a computer is way better at chess than a human. Also right? true. However, you, you can know now until deep fakes show up that it was a computer to computer and not two people sitting at a chessboard that you were watching. <laughs> so the counter argument, not to be you know, contentious, <laughs> but the counter argument is that now could I, are these two people really playing chess? Are they really sitting there and doing that? Is, are they both, uh, is one real and one fake? I don't know. It's well, a we get back to official channels. It, it'll have to go through the official channels and that's the way we do it. So is there a question I didn't ask you on today's podcast that maybe you want to answer? Something I didn't well, bring up or forget to bring up? Maybe. So, some things that are uh, pretty interesting that we're doing, we're also going to be getting into the sort of consumer consumption game, okay. which is being able to listen to podcasts through a player we produce. So for people that have followed the Apple Vision Pro and the MetaQuest and all that stuff, yeah. are you Trekkie? Uh, to a degree, yeah. I, don't pop quiz me because I'll probably not be able to get the actor's name right, apparently. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, you, but you know the, the holodeck, right? Yes, I'm familiar with well, Yeah, yeah. With the, with the Apple Vision Pro essentially doing a virtual Virtual holodeck. interviews. That is yeah. very true. That was one of the, there was a world that, that IBM had made once upon a time where you were, we were all supposed to meet in a virtual conference world. Do you remember that was called? Uh, what was that yeah. called? It was big for like five minutes and then everybody was like, no, that kind of sounds IBM. freaky. Oh yeah, they, they have like these sort of hologram. Is that it? it was, yeah, I can't remember the name at this moment because clearly I'm losing my memory on today's call, but there was a, it was relative to a world in which you were supposed to meet up and it was like going to be this, it was not the Sims because that was game version of this, but it sort of played on the idea that you would have virtual meetups and you'd do it in more of a professional manner. And I believe IBM was behind it for a while, but I get the concept of where it's going. And I certainly think that you know, there's a 3D augmented aspect to the Vision Pro, which is kind of- But, but even con consumption. So yeah. our, our lead investor is Jason Calacanis. He, he runs This Week in Startups, which is an over 10 year old podcast. I think it's from like 2008. Okay. So it's it's really old, over 1900 episodes. But he's also the one of the four hosts on All In, which is the top tech podcast in the world. Yeah. And imagine listening to All In for people that know it. Imagine being at the table with the four of them performing that episode. Yeah. And being able to say, just listen, but being able to say, hey, wait a minute. You said this last week, and then they turn towards you and have a back and forth. And then you tell them to carry on like John Luke Picard would in Star Trek. Yeah. Very That's going to be possible. And yeah. There are some fascinating things about that coming, no doubt about it. And I, I, I'm not that old. I've been around since the internet was online. I think these are all very fascinating topics and very cool. At the same time, I think I have a little bit of boomer mentality kicking in. <laughs> and I'm sort of like resisting a little of the idea that we're going to be in like, machine to machine language and artificial intelligence language and reproducing voices and things. I just see there's a scary ethical boundary in some of these things that can be crossed very fast, especially into the world of deep fakes and voices and stuff that you didn't say that somebody is like, well, I heard you on an audio. It's like, whoa, this could be a little crazy if we're not careful. Yeah, it's, it's going to be verification, authentication. It's it's going to be just like if you read a written quote and someone said, yeah. hey, this person wrote it. Well, maybe. Well, maybe. Right, maybe it'll not. go back to the data, down to the metadata and down to the, the validation of where that data actually originated from. So a little bit of forensic science will have to come through on some of those questions, I guess. A hundred percent. And also, I think the technology will just like the technology aspect of it will wash away. Yeah. So, for example, the iPhone, I mean, even the first iPhone wasn't that interesting, right? It was yeah. sort of a developer kit. Right? It, it actually, not even a developer kit because you can't even develop apps for it. So the first iPhone was sort of useless and it really became interesting a few years in. It's the same thing for the Apple Vision Pro. It's kind of like a big dev kit. It's heavy, doesn't last long enough in terms of battery. But the versions that are going to be coming of this, it's going to be like second nature, kind of like your phone. You're not going to think of all the tech. The tech doesn't really matter. People, What people care about is it works, it does the thing. Yeah, um, it does what I ask it to do. Which is, I'm going to hate on all the other Windows fanboys out here, but that's why I switched to Apple over more than a decade ago and really haven't had many technical problems knock on wood since then with my Mac devices. They just work. <laughs> yeah. I guess it makes me a little bit of a fanboy. <laughs> yeah, Apple, I mean, they're, they they have the nicest vertical integration of uh, things. I will say for, for Windows, yeah. like 
I will say for Microsoft, mm -hmm. I think they've really turned a leaf in terms of just their product and what they put out. It's Good. very different from 20 years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even probably 10 or so years ago, because it's been a long time since I, I just get frustrated with the idea of doing anything technical now with my machines, which I used to love back in the day when I had my Frankenstein on my desk and it was all about gaming and we, I tweaked the crap out of it to make it go faster or whatever. But and, that's now, been, and now it's just make it work, right? Now it's, it's just like, make it work. I got to get done. I got stuff to do. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like dubbing a podcast. Yes. You could do that. You right. could Today, you could use you could use speech to text. Yep. Translate the text, then do text to speech, and then edit that together. You could manually dub an episode in that way, right? True story. But when's it going to be interesting? It's going to be when you, podcast AI or products like that are going to be doing all that orchestrating for you and it's completely seamless. That's when it becomes interesting and everybody does it. Yeah, and it's definitely cutting edge, dude. And it's a fascinating topic and I could probably keep going on for another hour, but I better, better come to a conclusion on this one or yep. we'll keep going. And it's been good. Yeah. You're, you're great at this and this is fun and I've enjoyed the conversation. Just trying to give you some hooks and material. Yeah, right. We definitely got some <laughs> hooks and material to throw through some AI after this. No doubt yep. about it. So last question, if there was anybody within my power to interview uh, you, know, you for or to get you on an interview or meet them or have a lunch with them or connect with them and it was in my power, who would that be? Who would you want to meet and talk to and have lunch and... Oh, I, I'd love to talk to Sam Altman. Okay, Sam Altman. Talk about OpenAI and see what's going yeah. on with the it, AGI, maybe, and whatever else is possibly hanging out in the back end over there. For sure. And in fact, here's the funny thing. I think there's, uh, for people that have seen The Social Network, which was that movie about oh, yeah. Facebook. Back in the day. That was a fantastic movie. I There's... Someone's got to write something like the social network for what happened at OpenAI. It's months probably ago. on the book somewhere because it's been quite a dramatic year in the world of AI and change. That was and, wild. Yeah, it's been interesting. Tell a little power struggle going on. Okay, cool. Well, guys, if, if Sam Altman's in your network, we always talk about six degrees of separation in business and life, and somebody might know him. You might even be listening, Sam. And thank you very much for being a listener. If you are, come on down, tag in the comments, YouTube or other way, please. If we can get Edward connected, that would be amazing. We've had all kinds of people like Elon Musk and Warren Buffett, some of this Andre 3000. I joke about that one because that was way random. And people went and, you know, meet Jim Collins from Good to Great, which is a great book. I definitely recommend that one. And by the last thing, any books you recommend? Something somebody should be reading and maybe a podcasting guide or a book about this or a life story? Or um, I would, I, if you're interested in what's happening in tech and and some of AI, but also VC, I, I yeah, I, I mentioned this, All In is yeah, shout my, out to favorite, All in. my favorite tech podcast. Yeah. You were paid to say that, right? <laughs> you not sorry. not just, literally uh, not literally <laughs> but if you think now. about it <laughs> if you think about it the head of all in yes. one, of, one of the four is our lead yeah. investor i know <laughs> dude, the, the people who are listening to the audio aren't going to get the dead pan on your face just, <laughs> just, the look on your face like oh, i'm like <laughs> no uh, <laughs> well dude, technically i am and that's the end dude i appreciate you coming on pleasure